first Sunday of Christmas, our lesson comes from the second chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 22. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that when the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was a great, of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the moment she came and she began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Her name was Geraldine, and she remembered the story as if it had happened yesterday instead of nearly 70 years before, as she told the story to her pastor about when she was a child, and she was so excited because she went to church and they were having a grand nativity pageant. Geraldine was so excited as she was every year, and she auditioned for every part in the pageant as she had every year. She never got a good part, though, because Mary, that part was taken. She couldn't even get to part of a lamb in the field because Geraldine had a tendency to get sort of confused about things. They used to call that absent-mindedness. Now they probably call it ADHD. But her pastor and her Sunday school teacher took pity on her. They wanted her to have some part in the show. So they wrote in an extra part, not one of the characters from the scriptures, but at the end of the show, she was to come out and stand in front of everyone as the curtains closed and say, this is the end. Now, her parents knew that she would have a little trouble with that one line. They practiced with her. Her grandmother, who didn't want to be embarrassed, practiced with her. Her Sunday school teachers and her pastor practiced with her. And again and again, she stood up and said, this is the end, and took a bow and walked off the stage until the night of the pageant when she came out at the end and said, is this the end? Now, we'll come back to her in a moment, but maybe you feel like Christmas is over, and I feel sort of that way myself, because we had three services that we weren't even here for. We did them in parts so that people would be safe coming to sing, and people were sort of kidding me about how the candle seemed to get taller in some of the scenes, and how the Christ candle appeared and disappeared, and how sometimes there were angels behind the speakers, and sometimes poinsettias, and sometimes lots of candles, and sometimes two candles, and it was a little confusing. And now that Christmas is over, in that sense, I feel that. I have sweatpants on under my alb this morning. That's how tired I am. Stick a fork in me, I'm done, is what I'm feeling like. But Christmas is not over. Christmas is just beginning. Not just the season of Christmas, but the way of life that we call Christmas something that we see in the stories we read today. I love the gospel lesson for this morning. Simeon and Anna, both elderly folks who were praising, praying and praising God always in the temple, waiting for the redemption of Israel. And as Simeon said, a light for the Gentiles as well. 
He had been promised by the Holy Spirit. In his heart, he felt that he would not die until God's Messiah had been revealed to him. And this is not to say that it was a sin that required that Mary go to the temple. But when a lady had a baby in those days, she had to be purified after the fact. So this is beyond the time when Jesus went to the temple to be circumcised at eight days old as every first Every male in Jerusalem, every male in Israel was required to do under the law. But some weeks later, Mary had to go and present herself. We see a little bit about the Holy Family in this story because they gave the gift that was sort of the backup gift. Really, if you went to the temple to make the sacrifice for this, you would offer a goat or a sheep, a lamb of some kind, but they couldn't afford that. And so the law made provisions for the very poor and they were able to buy and to take there for sacrifice two pigeons. That's how poor their family was. And the temple in Jerusalem is a very grand place. And they walked into this grandeur, poor people that they were, and this man, a prophet of Israel, sees the child and understands in his heart that this is the Messiah. He picks up a child. You don't understand what a weird thing that was in those days, for a man to pick up someone else's child, especially in public, and to hold the baby and to say, now I may die in peace, Lord, because I have seen your salvation. Remember what he said, a light both to the Gentiles as well as the glory to God's people Israel. And then there was Anna, who had lived in poverty. We know that because she was a widow. She lived with her husband for eight years, and then to over the age of 80 after his death, she spent her time day and night in the temple praying and praising God, and she is rewarded with seeing this child, and they know that everything in the world has changed. There's a new normal now. Oh, I hate that expression. I keep hearing about the new normal with the COVID pandemic. This is our new normal. This is temporary. I'm telling you, next year, if we're not back here, I will be very surprised if we cannot worship in the church for Christmas next year because the vaccine is being dispersed right now as we speak. People are beginning to be inoculated so that we'll be able to move forward together. Not not yet, but it's coming. So while this is a temporary normal for us, for Simeon and Anna, everything had changed, just like it had for the shepherds the night that he was born. They were there the night he was born because the angels appeared to them and sent them, again, the poorest of the poor people around, to see what had happened. And what did they do? They went back to their fields rejoicing. We see a little bit of this in the Hebrew Bible lesson from the prophet Isaiah again. Isaiah chapter 61 into chapter 62. The time when the people had returned from the Babylonian exile, the time when they came back to their city and some of them had been gone so long they had no memories of it. Some had been born in captivity and they had no knowledge of it other than what they'd heard from their parents and their grandparents. And they returned to devastation and destruction and yet they rejoice because they are home and the promises of God are being fulfilled in their midst. And what are they called to do but to shout out with praise and joy and thanksgiving. We read the same sort of thing in the letter to the Galatians a church that struggled, a church that gave Paul some heartache along the way. But when the time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then an heir also through God. A new normal. Now, maybe it doesn't seem like things had changed because the shepherds were just as cold, just as tired, just as hungry, just as oppressed when they went back to their fields that night after going to see this baby. They would probably not live long enough to hear Jesus preach when he grew up. They would not witness his resurrection. Nor would Simeon, who was already an elderly man, nor would Anna but they knew in their hearts that everything had changed once and for all, and they lived that new normal the rest of their days, giving praise and thanks to God and proclaiming who God was. It was a new normal for the Galatian church, who still lived under the oppression of Rome, but at that time, everything changed for them. They were no longer slaves. Maybe they were in the temporal sense of their everyday lives, but in their hearts, they knew everything had changed. They were now children of God, 
made children through the Spirit of God coming through Jesus Christ, who was born of that woman, born under the law, to free people from the law of sin, to free people from death itself. So if things didn't change for them every day, then how did things actually change for them? That's what we're called to pay attention to in this story. Because maybe right now you feel like you're at the end of your rope. Maybe it's not the end of 2020 that you feel like you're at the end of, but you feel like, what am I going to do now? Everything is different this year, isn't it? It was so hard not to be together with you as we worshiped on Christmas Eve. I give so much thanks for our media team who worked tirelessly to put these services together so that you might worship from home. There were a few of us who gathered on a Zoom meeting Christmas Eve for the late service to just to see each other and wish each other a Merry Christmas. And every time I talk to anyone, they say, I just want to be back in my church. I want to be there. But let me remind you, you are the church right now. Wherever you are, you are the church of Jesus Christ because you are his body. You bear the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life, and you are called to profess the new reality in Jesus Christ. No matter what every day may bring, no matter what heartache and loss we might experience, we are God's children in Jesus Christ, no longer slaves, no longer bound to death but promised a future that is incredible and different. Now, Geraldine, as I said, she told that story to her pastor. Her pastor's parents weren't even born when that story happened to her. And she was laughing at her mistake, her gaff saying, is this the end? And he said to her, Geraldine, you are the one who got it right because it wasn't the end. It was only the beginning of new life in Jesus Christ. It was the beginning of God's reign. So I want you not to go home and pack up your, you know, if your tree is dry, you'll have to take that down. But please don't put away your nativity set. Don't take that crush away until the 12th of January. Let those kings make their way there just as they followed the star. Follow the light that is Christ in your life, and you will get there. I think Geraldine was right. Is this the end? By no means. She asked a good theological question. And it made me think of the work of Howard Thurman. I read part of one of his poems on Christmas Eve about lighting candles of hope in the darkness. Howard Thurman was born the grandson of a woman who had been enslaved. He went to seminary with Martin Luther King, not junior, but senior, and became a great influence and a mentor to Martin Luther King, Jr., the great civil rights leader. Howard Thurman was the first black man to hold the position of the dean of the chapel at a white university, Boston University. And he began with a white pastor, the first interracial, non-denominational church in San Francisco that welcomed everyone to proclaim who we are in Jesus Christ. He was ahead of his time, and he preached a gospel of nonviolent love. He didn't live long enough to see Barack Obama become president. He didn't live long enough to see the civil rights movement, do everything that it was going to do. But he wrote these words about Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. You know what happened the other day on December 21st? Winter began. Feels like it's been winter for months now, doesn't it? Feels like it's been Lent forever, even though we're already through Advent into the Christmas season. But on December 21st, the day was at its shortest point, And every day now, it's getting longer, imperceptibly so. But we know that spring is coming. We know that the world is going to blossom and bloom again as it always does. We need to be that way about our faith as well, that the seeds that God has planted will come to fruition in us as long as we realize that our new normal happened not because of a pandemic in 2020. Our new normal happened that night in Bethlehem when Christ was born, and it was reaffirmed as he grew, as he taught, as he preached, as he healed, as he fed, as he touched, as he brought hope to a hurting world. And it was made real on Easter morning when they went to the tomb expecting the old normal and finding that nothing would ever be the same again. Is this the end? Not by any stretch of your imagination. 
as long as Christ lives in you, as long as the hope lives in you, as long as you will go to that mountaintop and shout with all that you are, all that you have, that Christ your Savior is born and God Emmanuel is with us through this age and the age to come. Thanks be to God, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.